All right, all right. Today we're going to be talking about collimation of your X-ray beam. So how does the actual collimator work? What's the reason for doing collimation in your X-ray beam? Coming up right now at How Radiology Works. This is our X-ray tube right here. And then we have X-rays coming out virgent manner, right? So X-rays are coming out all throughout here. And then we have a housing actually around the tube itself. And the idea is that for instance, the size of our image receptor is limited. So we have an image receptor that's here. If we had radiation that was going all throughout these areas over here, there's actually no way that this would actually even land on the image receptor. That's the first reason why we want collimation. And then the second reason is if we're interested in our anatomy that's on the image receptor, which is only in a given smaller region, if the anatomy we know is going to land within a smaller region on our image receptor, then this radiation right out here, this is actually wasted radiation as well. What we're defining today is actually to bring in just metal from the side such that we can essentially block the radiation and we'll have the metal coming in from this way and the metal coming in from this way. And the idea is it will block the radiation so that it will get absorbed primarily with metal region. So we call that the collimator. So after we bring the collimator in, then we're limited actually to radiation only within what we call the field of view that we're prescribing. So the region of radiation, which we would like to irradiate, will have the primary radiation and there will not be radiation out here in the region where we're blocking it primarily with these collimators. So the collimator is defined actually in a plane that's relatively close to the tube. And then what we often care about is we have a patient that's right in here, lying on a table. We could talk about this here being the field of view in terms of the collimation. I'm only drawing a picture here in two dimensions. This is a three-dimensional case. So we actually have collimators coming this way and then also collimators coming in and out of the board. On our figure, you have the X-ray source and then you have the beam, which is actually collimated down by the collimators here on the side. We'll define a field of view in the object plane of the patient. Then you can see the field of view in the patient plane here. And then you can also see how that's defined on the detector, where in this case, we've only combed down a little bit. So most of the detector is actually covered. Then in order to visualize this, it's actually very helpful if we can see this right ahead of time, an interesting idea is actually to use a light bulb so that we could visualize the x-rays coming down. But before the x-rays come down, we'll send light down and the light field where that light field is landing on the patient, that is gonna be coincident with where the x-rays are gonna land on the patient. The x-rays are actually gonna come straight down and we can put a mirror in at an angle. The x-rays still can pass through that mirror but what that mirror is going to do is it will allow us to put a light bulb off to the side and then the light can come in, hit that mirror at the angle and then come down and be coincident landing. That light can essentially travel the same path that the x-rays will be traveling. The light that's at the outside will be blocked by the lead shutters or the collimator. And then the light that's on the inside is going to pass through in the same way as the x-rays. If you look at it from the perspective of the x-ray tube, you're actually gonna have lead shutters that are coming in from this direction and from this direction. So as the x-rays come down, you're actually defining a rectangular region. So as the collimation, the amount that we move those shutters in, as that goes up, the field of view is actually going down like we just drew. And what things are related to that? we're actually gonna have less radiation dose because that primary beam is gonna be smaller. In addition to the primary beam, there's also gonna be X-ray scatter effects. But you can think about in a relative large field of view case where not much collimation has happened, there can actually be X-rays that are coming in and they're not intended to hit this area in the middle of the image receptor, but they could scatter off into that area of the image receptor and when more of this area is irradiated, there's more areas to scatter and hence 
there is going to be more background fog or background haze essentially in your image due to scatter. This also reduces the contrast in your x-ray images. So as you collimate down, reducing the field of view, that's actually going to increase your contrast. One other thing that's kind of counterintuitive is these events are actually getting measured. So these extra scatter events are actually getting measured here. So the extra scatter is actually reducing the quantum noise. If you reduce the scatter by collimating these out, your quantum noise will be increased a little bit on your detector. Now that you understand how we can shape the beam in x-rays using the collimator, see our video on photoelectric and Compton interactions as to the basic physical principles of the way that those x-rays are interacting within the patient.